Welcome to the Fly Fishing Insider Podcast, where each week we speak with brands, icons, innovators, and trailblazers within the fly fishing industry, exploring both the successes and failures they've encountered along the way to become who they are today. But first, if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast or joined our email list, please do so by going to the Fly Fisher Insider Podcast.com, where you can also find us on Instagram at Fly Fisher Insider Podcast. Now let's begin. Welcome to the Fly Fishing Insider Podcast. Today, our guest is Derek Rodell from Rare Gear. Derek was back on the show for episode 13. Seems like a lifetime ago. Um, but here he is today to tell us more about what's been going on with Rare Gear. I did introduce Rare Gear last uh, over a year ago to you guys, and Rare Gear was the collapsible fly rod where the line still stays all attached and stuff. But here today to tell us more and what he's been up to. Derek, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me back for an update. Um yeah, over a year later, and uh, it's been a crazy year. I don't know uh, exactly where to start. If you just do, you want me to just give a general update on? Uh, well, I think how we've been doing, and that's COVID and such. Or yeah, what? yeah. I mean, I think right now, and I know we just talked off air quickly. I mean, it's been a crazy time for you right now. You know, personally for you and the brand and everything. Like you're in California. You mentioned there's wildfires at the time of this this recording. There's there's COVID outbreak. Um, what did you call it? Armageddon. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's approaching Armageddon at the moment, you know. Uh, previously, we could stay in our homes or go outside to a park or a river, you know, and enjoy the things we like to do. Currently, we really need to stay in our home for fear of sickness and of uh, you need a mask uh, to protect yourself from germs along with the smoke in the air. And, uh, yeah, we're not supposed to go outside even more. And uh, it's a heat wave on top of that. So we're getting close to Armageddon here. Hopefully it's over by the end of the week. <laughs> I, I hope so too. And we're, you know, we're praying and thinking about you and doing what, doing whatever we got to do. I'm sure you're, um, we're not the only ones out there that are, are thinking for you guys. So, but let's, let's jump into, yeah, rare gear. Like t- talk us to us um, a bit about the in case. Someone didn't hear episode 13, what you guys are about, sure. what, what you started and uh, then we'll take it from there. Yeah. So, um, I have built a career kind of in product development before this, yet always had a passion for fly fishing in the outdoors, whether it, um, you know, started with uh, trips with my family and then Boy Scouts. And then, uh, then I went to school for engineering and ended up doing product development for Silicon Valley companies and started thinking about how I can bring that to the, uh, you know, the toys and all the great things I like to do to promote adventures and uh, this rod was a culmination of that after I broke a few rods in travel and also wanted to always have a rod ready, whether I'm on a hike with people who are not very interested in fishing or I wanted a rod always in the car ready to go. Uh, so we came up with the uh, telescoping fly rod. That's kind of a combination between Tenkara and traditional. And the line actually goes on the inside of the rod with no uh, guides on the outside and you can be fishing from backpack or um, case to cast in about 30 seconds. Um, and the performance is kind of between those also. It's not going to cast a hundred feet for tarpon, but um, it's a great, always ready fish anywhere rod is what we came out with. Love it, man. Definitely uh, super cool. Uh, and that's why you're back. So, so when we left off and what I remember was it was an eight weight rod um, you know, sales were going, you were getting into shops, you were, you were pushing the, pushing the product. So uh, over a year later, talk to us, like, what have you been up to with the rod? How's the response? What's been going on? Any, you know, new models, all the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So about a year ago, um, we were on the market for a few months at that point and we're now about a year and a half, almost two. Oh yeah. We're two years in now. And, um, we previously, we were met with a lot of, uh, skepticism, whether it's the Tenkara folks or the traditional, uh, fly fishing crowd, everybody kind of just said, what is this rod? And I feel like we've gotten past the hump. Maybe it's the communication on our, um, 
social media channels and our emails and maybe a couple more articles out there that people get it like, oh, this is, you know, yeah, to create portability, to create mobility in this fishing anywhere thing. Um, so I feel like we've gotten past the hump. I'm, I'm talking to less people, convincing them that this idea is something real. And, uh, and people are grasping onto it. It's, uh, it's pretty great. Some people are taking it as a kind of second rod or, or an extra rod to have around. And some people are newcomers to the sport and they're, and they're grabbing this rod. Um, when they're, let's say an apartment person in the, in New York city, they're grabbing this rod because it fits in a drawer. Mm -hmm. And whenever they do have that weekend trip, they can just pick it up and be ready to go. So it's, uh, it's catching on and it's great. The, we have two models now. We have our about six weight, we're calling our medium weight rod, and then we have our lighter weight, which is about a four weight rod. And uh, so people can pick between the two. And um, previously, we just had the more medium weight rod, and we came out with that one first because we wanted a uh, do anything rod. Mm -hmm. And I've caught anything from tiny bluegill to up to like 30 inch pike on that rod. And uh, it's proven to be great as a do-anything rod. So we did want to come out with something a little bit lighter for those mountain streams and backpacking and uh, a finer touch. So we have that one. We also have some collapsible nets on the website, and we're trying to build. We're really trying to build a kit of uh, kind of this travel-friendly fish anywhere kit, like I keep saying. And uh, we have nets from Handy Pack Net. They make those in Pennsylvania. We're trying to get those out there. Um, and yeah, we're really trying to expand. We, uh, throughout this time, this has been a bit of a side project endeavor as I'm juggling, uh, a day job and, uh, the head of this, uh, rod idea on mm, the side. Course, yeah. And that is definitely transitioning now in this year to, I'm working on the plans to make uh, rare gear, the full-time thing. I'm hiring my first full-time employee coming up soon for the holiday season. <clears throat> and a lot of that is also due to COVID. I didn't change marketing budget this year, but the fact that people are supposed to distance and being outside was eventually approved and celebrated that that's a good thing to do. People are distancing and fishing, it seems. Um, so me and the rest of the outdoor industry, I, I think I've seen, uh, you know, about double increase in sales. I'm, I've sold this summer about two and a half times more than last summer with no extra marketing budget, which is amazing. Um, part of that, I think, is the word is spreading, but um, and more people are searching this out. So it's great. Yeah, I totally agree with um, you on that, Derek. The word is spreading, and people are searching you guys out um, because of and and also I think more importantly, you have more options. You have that lighter four weight rod, which is what I was just going to ask you. Now that you're you're doubled because you got double the product as well. So you are you selling more of the lighter weight or or more of the mid weight? Ah, uh, yeah, it's about fifty fifty. Um, we'll see how it balances out. I had a little bit of a. Yeah, it was about 50-50, and every time I think, you know, I get inventory in, because it's been a struggle to keep inventory in, which is a great problem over the summer, yeah, yeah. Uh, every time I get a new batch of the lighter weight rod in, I'd be like, oh, the lighter weight rod is, is ready, and then there'd be a surge of the medium weight sales, too, and then I'd be out, uh, sold out of those, and uh, yeah, it just it, it's interesting. It fluctuates between them in surges, and I don't know if that's a certain crowd talks about it. You know, the bass crowd has a conversation or it's on some Instagram and they go or what, but um, it's pretty interesting. It goes in surges between the two, but we're about, about even for the year. Awesome. I love it though. So you mentioned nets, you, you, so you got mm -hmm. rods, you got nets. Um, you're, you guys are going all in on this, like collapsible, portable kind of little travel system. What uh, what other projects, if there are any, that you're working on that would complement that, or what would you see like you'd like to complement that? Yeah, uh, so I am working on a couple other ideas, maybe some type of waiting booty or something like that that kind of goes in the kit. So, so you can have something nice. Let's say if you're backpacking or riding your bike or traveling, 
um, uh, to, yeah, to go wade in the river. Uh, it wouldn't be a full set of waders, just like a booty. Um, and I don't know if exactly, it's always nice to have felt on there, but, uh, yeah, we're thinking about other ideas to round out the whole kit, this whole fly fishing kit. Um, maybe some type of waiting staff thing, just, just all the stuff to have a nice compact kit as, uh, my buddies keep telling me, he's like, are you trying to go fishing out of an outdoor tin? And, uh, yeah, I guess I am. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's actually, it's super cool. Um, I, I, I'm just, yeah, I'm blown away. I'm, that's really cool stuff. Uh, you know, cause it's like you said at the very beginning of this, it's a secondary unit to what you might have. So if I had say a Winston rod, this would be a compliment to that Winston rod in the sense that mm-hmm. I'm going to go backpacking. I'm not going to bring my, you know, $1,200 rod in, into the, to the high Alpine countries and run the risk of breaking and stuff like that. So it's kind of crazy. Um, you know, Derek, you also mentioned about Instagram and you know, your marketing budget. So how was rare gear marketing this like this year i know before it was heavily through influencers and and uh or i don't know if heavily is the word but you said influencers before and um instagram is that still the way yeah um influencers are are a little tough you know it's uh as i learned a lesson as a small business owner um a lot of people are out there with good intentions but the you really have to line up the execution of how you want them to help promote your brand because it might not be done <clears throat> how you imagine initially if you just hand them a rod and say, go for it. So I learned a few lessons there. I don't know if influencers is, is totally the way to go. Um, the most success I have uh, since talking to you, I started a, a Google campaign and uh, just Google search campaign and found that, that that's the most successful uh, for sure as, um, you know, it finds people already, already looking to buy products, right? They're kind of looking at the backpacking rod or something. And then my idea is thrown in front of them. Um, and they're more receptive rather than on, I think on Instagram and all that, it's great. And I might get a sale long term from a lot of people might be a lot of people thinking about it, but those people aren't essentially searching to buy at the moment. Um, but I'm definitely pushing, uh, to spread the word on social media, Instagram specifically. Uh, but I think, yeah, the Google campaign is, is doing well. Oh, that's awesome, man, for sure. What else uh, What else would you say is going on? Or if you have anything, I mean, or where, where would you like to go with all this eventually here um, over the past, next year? Oh, yeah, over the next year. Yeah, I'd like to really, um, really step up. I would say we are weak, big time weak compared to the other companies like uh, – you know, on, uh, on media, videos, photos, all that. It takes a surprising amount of effort, you know, and money also to try to really put together a good kit, have it, you know, have a new video every week, have, have all these things. Um, next year, I really want to step up all that, uh, step up maybe some more instructional things and just really create a more polished, polished brand, uh, to compete with, uh, everybody else out there. It seems like, even the small companies are, are powerhouses now. You know that all the ten car companies have have a lot of power behind them. And uh, yeah, there's a couple other rod companies out there that I'm looking up to for how they're presenting themselves. So try to step it up. Stepping it up is always good, Derek. Speaking of ste- stepping it up, I do. I'm just looking at some notes here from what I recall of our past interview. And again, it was like it was a while ago. But I know one of the questions that people had asked me that um, I couldn't remember how I answered it was the fly line that's on there, and it was the taper and stuff like that. Is that fly line? Are you able to integrate a different line? So let's say we didn't want. Uh, your your line and we wanted to go with a, an, a new amplitude fly line or the new amplitude trout uh, um, small creek fly line something like that is that able are we mm-hmm. able to, are we able to integrate that with that rod and reel combo yeah for sure so what we do is we actually get worked with scientific anglers mm-hmm. on this that we talked about in the past and they have um, they have a textured set of fly lines That's right. and we found that that works the best on the inside of our uh, rods because of just all the science and the work they've put to reduce surface area and friction. And it's works great in these rods. Uh, so if they want to swap lines, they can swap with any of the textured lines that scientific anglers, uh, sells is, is a good option. 
uh, whether that be sinking or floating or intermediate. I forget if they have a textured intermediate line, but um, yeah, any of those options with that texture on there. And if they want to reach out, they can just send us an email right off the website um, or a question on Instagram or something. And we can talk about all that if you want to really set up this rod. Um, but leaning back on this rod is, uh, this rod is just meant to be, you know, something for fun to grab and, and to use the, you can definitely set it up and tune it to what exactly you want. But, uh, yeah, it's meant to be just some, a grab and go kit ready to have fun and fish and, um, get out there. So we're, we're trying to set it as, sell it as that combo. So it makes it easy for people just to get the kit, not need to research reels and lines and all that. Yeah, of course, right? And the, I mean, you know, you, you nailed it right there, exactly what it is. So, you know, uh, Derek, I'm looking at everything, and it's just like I'm so amazed, like, how far you guys have come within the the past year and, you know, like, what you got next going on. I really think you're on to something special with this whole travel. It's just a niche, and niches always do well. You've really found a niche. You've mastered your niche and stuff like that. What – um. Any advice for anyone out there or if anyone wanted to reach out to you guys and ask questions about that, like what would you, you know, what's the most common response you're getting from people in the industry, like, you know, about this rod? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's something different. Making something different is always harder than making a Me Too item. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely harder, but we truly have like, something different to talk about and a different experience to sell, which people are, are slowly grasping onto. So I encourage everybody to yet yeah, pursue if they have different ideas. And if uh, someone wants help with uh, promoting an idea or coming out with an idea, like I have a background in product development, they want to talk to me about it to help them out. And, uh, but don't hit the travel niche because that one's mine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. At least you're honest, right? So, yeah, man. Um, you know, like again, what a year later, here we are. So, any keep it simple. Any parting words for any listeners out there? Um, no, just you know, go out there and have fun. Everybody, stay safe these days. And uh, for the listeners that do want, I'll extend the same discount. For that POD20, P-O-D-20, if you want a discount on some rods, we are currently sold out. I will start a uh, pre-sale soon, so you can even get a discount off that lower price. Um, But, yeah, reach out with any questions, and um, we're, uh, yeah, we're looking to expand and uh, get deeper into the fly fishing industry. How can we do? How can we help you? Because we're such good, you know, believers in Mm. your products. How can we help you guys? Yeah, you can help by telling people that there there is yet another option. There's Tenkara, there's rare gear, and there's a regular fly rod. Mm-hmm. Like, if you have friends interested in fishing and on the edge, you know, maybe put one of these in their hands or send them a link to our website. Okay. It's uh, meant to be a little bit easier to approach um, and to get out there. Yeah. Um, so spread the word for us and, uh, you know, a small entrepreneur trying to make something new happen. In, a, in this industry would be great perfect we love it Dirk so with that said I'm going to let you go I'm going to put all the details within our show notes so our listeners can find you guys reach out to you and uh, learn more about rare gear and your amazing fly rods and nets so and what else you have to come so with that said listeners I want to thank you and Derek. I want to thank you as well great thank you Greg no worries thanks guys yeah. bye bye you've been listening to the Fly Fishing Insider Podcast If you like this podcast episode, please let us know, leave a review and subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast listening platform.